Hey, welcome to uh, Lyons Township High School Physics C. Uh, got an example of uh, statics, uh, a, a, uh, a, an object that's in uh, equilibrium, and therefore we know the net force and net torque on it is zero. Um, in this example, we will, we will be doing numbers, uh, so you will want a calculator, and uh, you can spot check me, make sure that I got my calculations right on these. Um, so the, the, the situation, um, it's the, it's the uh, what we call the Sir lost a lot example. So we have a, a castle wall and a drawbridge uh, attached to the castle wall, but not down all the way. Okay, and uh, the castle or the drawbridge is attached to the castle wall with a some kind of chain. Okay, and Sir lost a lot. It walked across the drawbridge before it was down, and now he's standing at the edge of the drawbridge and has nowhere to go, a little lost, okay? Um, so here's what we want to find. Uh, we basically want to find, um, once I give you numbers, uh, the tension in the drawbridge cable, okay? And there's a couple of them, they would share the tension. And then um, the reaction forces uh, between the castle wall and the actual drawbridge. So um, this is a little sketch. Um, now we're going to draw an actual FBD of the drawbridge. So we'll do that right here. And I'll draw it kind of big because we're going to be writing all over it. OK, so what forces act on the drawbridge? Well, first of all, you're going to have the weight of the drawbridge itself. Um, now, I'll call it big W. Uh, that'll be dead center. OK, now again, we'll give you numbers in a, in a bit. Um, the weight of the person, now it's, it's technically it's the, the normal force of the person pushing down on the drawbridge. But if he's stationary and not doing anything, then that normal force will equal his weight. Um, I'll call that uh, little w, OK? Um, so we'll be careful, make sure big w is big and little w is little. Um, you have the drawbridge cable, which we're going to put that um, a little bit beyond uh, the, the center of mass of the drawbridge. And uh, that's going to be at an angle theta. Oh, I take that back. That's going to be, we're going to call that angle phi, like so. Okay. The angle with the horizontal here, that's going to be theta. And no, they're not the same. <laughs> All right. And then also, um, the drawbridge wall is holding this thing up. So I'm going to make guesses as to the direction of the reaction forces. Now, as far as the horizontal component of the reaction force, well, the only horizontal force here is tension to the left. So guess which way the wall is going to push on the drawbridge. You guessed it, to the right. So I'll call that, I'll, I'll go with what most textbooks would do. I'll call that Rx, just for, just for kicks. And then um, I'm going to guess that the wall is going to hold the drawbridge up, I'll call that Ry. Okay? Um, now that depends. It really does depend. It depends on the relative magnitudes of these, uh, where they're at, and also where, especially, where the drawbridge cable is attached. So the further out the drawbridge cable is attached, uh, the more positive that number gets. At some point, when you start moving that cable in, eventually this actually becomes negative and pulls down. So uh, we'll see which one we get here. Um, I've got to give you numbers for, for uh, both the weights and, and also distances. Let's say the whole bridge is 8 feet. Uh, so the center from here to here would be 4 feet. So that's from the, the pivot point to there. We'll go this distance here is 1 foot. And I'm, I'm writing inches there, sorry. Um, and then uh, from here to here would be 3 more feet. So we've got a 4 foot, 1 foot, and a 3 foot. Okay. Um, the numbers that we're going to want, and I'll write them down here so we got some room. We've got theta, which we're going to make 20 degrees. We've got phi, which we're going to make 50 degrees. Uh, the big weight, which will make uh, 1,000 pounds. And the little weight, which we'll, we'll call him with his armor and everything, 200 pounds. Okay. And uh, again, we're going to find the tension in the drawbridge cable and the reaction forces at the contact point between the bridge and the wall. So we're going to start with uh, net force. And we'll, we'll start with the x direction. 
So if you do net force in the x direction equals zero, well, there's only two forces here. You got Rx pointing to the right. Now here's the tricky part, one of them. <laughs> You've got a component of tension pointing to the left. How do you calculate that component of tension? Well, if you look carefully here, the angle that we're going to use is not phi, okay? We want to know what's that angle, this angle here, with the vertical, okay? Well, I, I hope you kind of maybe see it. If this angle is phi, we know that that angle is theta, alternate interior angles for parallel lines. So this angle here is phi minus theta. Okay, now I'm not going to plug numbers in yet, but it would be 50 minus 20, which is, which is going to be 30 degrees. So um, we need um, the, the component of tension that is strictly horizontal, which is T cosine of phi minus theta. And that's it in the horizontal direction. So you got one equation with two unknowns. Uh, the next equation we're going to do is a vertical, so net force in the vertical equals zero. Well, here we got a little more work to do. Um, we have Ry pointing up. We have the component of tension pointing up, which, similar to the, what we just said, it's going to be sine of phi minus theta for the same exact reason. And we have two uh, different weights pointing down. So assuming up is positive, you're going to have Ry pointing up plus T sine of oh, phi minus theta Okay, uh, minus big W minus little w equals zero. So there is our second equation, but we still have three unknowns. So now we got to do net torque about some axis is zero. Okay, so uh, now we got to pick an appropriate axis. Now you can pick <laughs> any axis you want um, to study torque about, and it wouldn't matter which one. You'd, you'd, you'd get the same three unknowns. You'd have three equations you could solve. In this example, as with most of them, you to typically, just to make your life easier, you want to pick an axis through which most of the, uh, as many unknowns go through it as possible. So for our three unknowns, tension, r, y, and r, x, for me, I'm going to pick this point. That's going to be our axis, because then r, x, and r, y, they don't cause torque about that point, so we don't have to worry about them anymore. Um, so it turns out then, once you make an equation for net torque about that point, the only unknown you're going to have is going to be tension. Okay, so we're going to actually be able to solve for tension directly here. All right, so um, I do have to pick a, a positive direction. I'll go with clockwise is positive. So anything causing clockwise torque, a clockwise spin is positive. Well, that's big W and little w. And then the tension, the torque created by tension, is going to be negative or counterclockwise. So having said that, um, we'll just start from here and work our way out. Now, the other thing you get to do is to find torque. Um, it's R cross F. You can either find the component of F perpendicular to the radius, or you can find the perpendicular lever arm that radius that's perpendicular to your line of force. In this example, I'm actually going to mix and match those, okay? 4W, okay? To me, I look at that problem and I, I imagine that, okay? This is my perpendicular lever arm. That is the perpendicular distance, the shortest line between my axis and the line of force, okay? Now, again, the keys on that, um, and sometimes this is hard for people, the key on that is to start at your axis, and you have to figure out, well, what line would I draw to give me the shortest distance from that axis to this line of force, which, by definition, has to be perpendicular to that line of force. So in this picture, it's this. Well, how far is that? Well, it's just four cosine of that angle. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and so and I'll do those in red. So that's a clockwise torque, so it's positive. It's the weight of the bridge, it's big W, times four cosine of the angle. That's that perpendicular lever arm. So four cosine of theta. Okay. 
And um, I'll do the, the tension in blue, now here's why. For the tension, I look at that and yes, we could find a perpendicular lever arm for that. It would go from here to about there or so, hitting that line of force perpendicularly. Um, however, that would be some geometry. We could do it, um, but it would be several lines of work and, and a little more thought. So for the tension, to me, it seems like it would be easier to find the component of the tension that's perpendicular to the bridge. Okay? So my radius is simply five feet, and the component of the tension that's perpendicular to that five feet would be T sine of phi. Okay, not, not the phi minus theta anymore, it's phi. Because we're looking at relative to the bridge now, not relative to the horizontal. So having said that, the torque created by that would be T sine phi. So that's a minus torque in our system. So minus T sine phi and then times the five feet. Okay. And then finally we got the weight of Sir Lost a lot. Um, very much like the bridge, uh, the bridge weight itself. The only difference is instead of four cosine theta, well now my lever arm goes all the way to there. That's the line of force. Again, we want a perpendicular lever arm. Um, that's just eight cosine of uh, theta. So it would be plus little w um, times eight cosine theta all equals zero. Okay. So we spent a lot of time explaining that. Now, if you can do that relatively rapidly, the rest of the problem is really simple. Um, if you'll notice in this third equation we got, okay, the only unknown is your tension. So now you can just plug and chug and solve. Uh, when I did that, here's what I got for my tension. I got uh, 1,374 pounds. Okay. So those chains got to hold quite a bit of force or quite a bit of tension. Okay. Now once you've got this, okay, you can go back and plug that tension into here to get Rx. Okay. So when I did that, I got Rx was um, 1,190 pounds, which is pretty hefty, okay? Uh, so you better make sure that your castle wall is sturdy and that the support attaching the bridge to the castle walls is fairly sturdy. Um, and then also, similarly, you can find Ry right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, you can find Ry here because now we have tension and we know these. And if you do that, I got Ry to be 513 pounds. So by the way, um, in that case, um, we guessed right, okay? We guessed that Ry would be up, in this case we got up. Um, if you move the, the, the tension in, if you put this attach point there, uh, it, would, it would be the other way, Ry would point down. So um, that's an example of using um, net force and net torque uh, to calculate uh, unknown forces in a situation. Things to be careful of in general. Um, for Fx and Fy, we were looking relative to the horizontal and vertical. So we needed the components of tension that were horizontal and vertical. Not relative to the bridge, but relative to the ground. Okay? For torque, okay, in this case, when we were figuring out, for instance, the uh, torque created by the, the, the drawbridge cable, the tension, well now we want the component of tension that's perpendicular to the bridge. That's not horizontal or vertical, it's perpendicular to this line here. So you gotta be real careful with your angles. So be, just be careful if you have an, something that's angled and you have, uh, so if you have an object that's angled and you have you know, forces acting on it at angles, you gotta be really, really careful with the angles. Um, the math here isn't actually that bad, it's just the details that you gotta be real careful about. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, thank you very much.